Hey guys, okay, we're gonna move straight on to chapter three and it's called Plumbing Weekly. Sounds exciting. I can't find Plumbing Weekly, Raj, said Ben. It was the next Friday and the boy had been scouring the magazine shelves of the local newsagent shop. He couldn't find his favorite publication anywhere. The magazine was aimed at professional plumbers and Ben was beguiled by pages and pages of pipes, taps, cisterns, ballcocks, boilers, tanks and drains. Plumbing Weekly was the only thing he enjoyed reading, mainly because it was crammed full of pictures and diagrams. Ever since he had been old enough to hold things, Ben had loved plumbing. When other children were playing with ducks in the bath, Ben had asked his parents for bits of pipe and made complicated water channeling systems. If a tap broke in the house, he fixed it. If a, do if a toilet was blocked, Pen ben wasn't disgusted, he was ecstatic. Ben's parents didn't approve of him wanting to be a plumber though. They wanted him to be rich and famous and to their knowledge, there had never been a rich and famous plumber. Ben was as good with his hands as he was rubbish at reading and was absolutely fascinated when a plumber came round to fix a leak. He would watch in awe as a junior doctor might watch a great surgeon at work in an operating theater. But he always felt like a disappointment to his mum and dad. They desperately wanted him to fulfill the ambition they had never managed to become a professional ballroom dancer. Ben's mum and dad had discovered their love of ballroom dancing too late to become champions themselves. And to be honest, they seemed to prefer sitting on their bums watching it on the TV to actually taking part. As such, Ben tried to keep his passion private. To avoid hurting his mum and dad's feelings, he stashed his copies of Plumbing Weekly under his bed. And he had made an arrangement with Raj so that every week the news agent would keep the plumbing magazine aside for him. Now though, he couldn't find it anywhere. Ben had searched for the magazine behind Kerrang and Heat and even looked underneath the lady. Not an actual lady, I mean the magazine called The Lady. All to no avail. Raj's store was madly messy, but people came from miles away to shop there as he, was, as he always brought a smile to their faces. Raj was halfway up a stepladder putting up Christmas decorations. Well, I say Christmas decorations. He was actually putting up a banner that read Happy Birthday, though he had tipexed out the word birthday and replaced it in scratchy biro with Christmas. Raj carefully stepped down off the ladder to help Ben with his search. You're plumbing weekly. Hmm, let me think. Have you looked beside the toffee bonbons? Said Raj. Yes, replied Ben. And it's not underneath the colouring books? No. And you have checked behind the penny chews? Yes. Well, this is very mysterious. I know I ordered one for you, young Ben. Hmm, very mysterious. Raj was speaking extremely slowly, in that way people do when they are thinking. I am sorry, Ben. I know you love it, but I don't have a clue where it is. I do have a special on Cornettos. It's November, Raj. It's freezing outside, said Ben. Who would want to eat a Cornetto now? Everyone, when they hear about my special offer. Wait until you hear this. Buy 23 Cornettos, get one free. Why on earth would I want 24 Cornettos, said Ben with a laugh. Um, well, I don't know. You could maybe eat 12 and put the other 12 in your pocket to enjoy later. That's a lot of Cornettos, Raj. Why are you so keen to get rid of them? They go out of date tomorrow, said Raj, as he lumbered over to the freezer cabinet, slid open the glass top and pulled out a cardboard box of Cornettos, a freezing cold mist immediately shrouded the shop. Look, best before 15th of November. Ben studied the box. It says best before 15th of November, 1996. Well, said Raj, even more reason to put them on special offer. Okay, Ben, this is my final offer. Buy one box of Cornettos, I will give you 10 boxes, absolutely free. Really, Raj, no thanks, said Ben. 
He peered into the freezer cabinet to see what else might be lurking in there. It had never been defrosted and Ben wouldn't have been surprised to find a perfectly preserved woolly mammoth from the Ice Age in there. Hang on, he said, as he moved a, a few frost encrusted ice lollies out of the way. It's in here, plumbing weekly. Ah, oh, yes, I remember now, said Raj. I put it in there to keep it fresh for you. Fresh, said Ben. Well, young man, the magazine comes out on a Tuesday, but it's Friday today, so I put it in the freezer to keep it fresh for you, Ben. I didn't want it to go off. Ben wasn't sure how any magazine could ever go off, but he thanked the newsagent anyway. That's very kind of you, Raj, and I'll have a packet of Rolos, please. I can offer you 73 packets of Rolos for the price of 72, exclaimed the newsagent with a smile that was meant to entice. No thanks, Raj. 1,000 packets of Rolos for the price of 998. No thanks, said Ben. Are you mad, Ben? That's a wonderful offer. All right, all right. You drive a hard bargain. Ben, 1 million and seven packets of Rolos for the price of 1 million and four. That's three packets of Rolos absolutely free. I'll just take one packet and the magazine. Thank you. Of course, young sir. I can't wait to get stuck into plumbing weekly later. I have to go and spend the whole night with my boring old granny again. It had been a week since Ben's last visit and the dreaded Friday had rolled around once more. His parents were going to see a chick flick, according to his mum. Romance and kissing and all that goo, yuck, yuck, said Raj, shaking his head as he counted out Ben's change. Ben instantly felt ashamed. He had never seen the news agent do this before. Like all other local kids, Ben regarded Raj as one of us, not one of them. He was so full of life and laughter. Raj seemed a world away from parents and teachers and all the grown-ups that felt they could tell you off because they were bigger than you. Just because your granny is old, young Ben, said Raj, doesn't mean that she is boring. I'm getting on a bit myself and whenever I've met your granny I have found her to be a very interesting lady. But don't be too hard on her Ben, pleaded Raj. We will all be old one day, even you, and I'm sure your granny will have a secret or two. Old people always do. Okay, that's chapter three. Thanks for listening guys and um, look forward to reading you chapter four. Bye.